Today uh, I'll be speaking a little bit more about the cultivation of boundless love, of loving kindness. And um, I think I'll begin with uh, an uplifting uh, <laughs> recollection and an uplifting uh, talk on the development of loving kindness and then we're just going to flow into it and as we saw in the previous talks the Buddha had a way of uh, of teaching uh, meditators to uplift their minds having an uplifted joyful mind because a uplifted mind is uh, a joyful mind is mindful it's aware it's present and so I thought I would briefly just say uh, a few a few benefits that uh, in fact that the Buddha uh, often uh, told the, the monks that uh, loving kindness has uh, particularly and amongst them is that one one goes to bed and falls asleep very easily one doesn't have any bad dreams Th those are some advantages of going to bed with loving kindness in your heart and then uh, human beings love that person <laughs> and then non-human beings also love that person and they are protected by the Dhamma and protected by the Devas also. And one's mind is uh, easily collected, easily goes into this wonderful present awareness and uh, stillness becomes very calm very easily. And that's one of the advantages that the Buddha said doesn't come with all of the other uh, meditation types that he taught. He said that was very specific to loving kindness. The mind goes really quickly in meditation. And so it's a very powerful uh, vehicle for the mind, for happiness. And too often, uh, this loving kindness meditation is underestimated. I thought I would prop it up again tonight, <laughs> like I, I do, I do every talk, I think, but uh, especially tonight because um, uh, it's 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 important to to remember that uh, this this vehicle of boundless love toward, towards all living beings. Is, is not a small thing. It's not, it's not just this casual little uh, meditation that kind of has some benefits. It does have really, really potent benefits and very directly, immediately visible benefits and wonderful uh, repercussions in our lives around us. And for everyone's benefit, it is very good to keep on cultivating it. And so, in, in one sutta, it's called the Sankhita Sutta, the, the, it's a concise instruction to a monk. I'm not going to go through this whole sutta, but there is one specific uh, section here on boundless love, on loving kindness, and how to cultivate it. And so the Buddha says, first, uh, in, in the first place, monk, you should, you should train in this way. I will develop a mind that is still and well established within. So just settling down the mind at first, letting go of the past, letting go of the future, just being in the present moment and calming down. An existing harmful, unwholesome states of mind will not take over and settle in the mind. So, restlessness, strong desires for this or that, the future, the, pre the past, the present. Um, just learning to be here, now, happy with ourselves and calming down. Restlessness is one of them. 
And then, when the mind is still and well established within, and existing harmful and wholesome states of mind do not take over and settle, then, monk, you should train in this way. I will develop and cultivate the release of mind by boundless love. This is usually uh, how the Buddha called this specific practice of that we are doing every week is the, the liberation of mind through boundless love. I will make it a vehicle, make it a foundation, practice it, accumulate it, and undertake it thoroughly. This is how you should train monk. And here we, we see a few different functions that are quite wonderful. Uh, we tend, in meditation, we tend to put everything as an object of meditation. But here the Buddha is quite clever and, s and skillful in many ways and says it's not just an object, it's, it's a vehicle for the mind. It's a, it's a foundation also. And, it's, and it has to be practiced, it has to be accumulated, it has to be um, undertaken uh, genuinely. And while you develop and cultivate this meditation, you should develop it with thinking and imagination. Without thinking and with imagination, and without thinking nor imagination. Which means, this practicing ourselves, the first having loving thoughts for f in every moment, but then also being able to take it a little further and stay with a loving uh, recollection or a loving object like we sometimes do. We think about in meditation, we'll bring up a happy uh, memory or a loving memory of someone. Um, and, then, and then to be able to not just have a one-pointed thought, but also to keep it, keep it, continue it, keep it going. And then, and then these, that thinking and imagination at some point will just fade away and just to be able to stay with only, only the feeling without a particular reason, just the feeling. And then you should develop it with joy and then without joy, accompanied by delight and accompanied by calm. And so here this, this also means in all situation. And so that our love is not only tied to certain moments in our lives, but it can be also very mm, all around. It can be <laughs> all terrain, all terrain, loving kindness, <laughs> able to uh, bear up with any situation, which also means forgiveness, also means compassion. And when we bring up uh, at the beginning the love, the loving kindness, with either an object or uh, just the feeling, uh, then the, uh, the, the visualization or the object will fade away and the feeling will become more established. And then joy will naturally arise after a while wh while we learn to stay with that object a little longer or to stay with the love. And then this becomes very pleasant. That's the delight. And even the delight brings us to a place where the, lo the loving kindness, the feeling inside, will become very sustained, but also more subtle, more stable, and uh, more continuous. And then the last stage of it is usually calm or equanimity, which there is the feeling still, but it is a very strong and steady feeling, and it's very calm, very stable. And that is where we are going with this 
loving kindness. And then further, uh, and that's the, the, the last uh, little bit of, of a sutta that I wanted to share tonight, is the, the sutta on the development of boundless love, again, but it's in the Itivutaka, the uh, words spoken by the Buddha. It's a specific um, part of the canon in the shorter suttas. It said, Monks, whatever vehicle or ground there is for producing merit, producing wholesome deeds, and for the generation of acquisition, that simply means karma. Whatever things that we can do that will produce more karma in our lives, because the, the Buddhist teaching goes beyond producing karma, attaining Nibbana, for example, um, is, is also, uh, there's no more karma after this, or there, the past karma will keep going, but there is no more generation of karma. But the Buddha says here, which is quite a, quite a very profound statement, is that whatever vehicle or ground there is for producing merit or the generation of new karma, of new actions and new result of action, all of these are not worth one-sixteenth of the liberation of the mind through boundless love. And that's the power of this meditation that we practice every week is not to be underestimated. Radiant, blazing and shining forth, the liberation of the mind through loving-kindness surpasses them all. Monks, just like whatever radiance there is from the stars, all of it is not worth one-sixteen of the moon's radiance. Radiant, blazing and shining forth, the moon's radiance surpasses them all. In the same way, monks, whatever vehicle or ground there is for producing merit or for the generation of new karma, all of, it, all of these are not worth one-sixteenth of the liberation of mind through boundless love. Monks, just like in the last month of the monsoon season, in autumn, when the sky is clear and the rain clouds have passed, the sun rises above the dark mass, radiant, blazing, shining forth, winning over all space, winning over darkness, and driving it away. In the same way, monks, whatever vehicle or ground there is for producing merit and the generation of new karma, all of these are not worth one-sixteenth of the liberation of mind through boundless love. Monks, just like at the end of the night, the morning star radiates, blazes, and shines forth. In the same way, because whatever vehicle or ground for there is for producing merit or for generating new karma, all of these are not worth one sixteen of the liberation of mind through boundless love. So this is <laughs> quite clear. <laughs> This is the meaning of what the Exalted One said. Further in, the, further in this regard, he spoke thus, For one who develops universal love with boundless awareness, the, feather, the fetters wear away as one witnesses the ending of all acquisitions. There's no more holding to anything. The mind is completely liberated for a moment. The moment that we practice this. Having an unspoiled mind towards one being, lovingly, there is merit therein. But having a compassionate mind towards all beings, the righteous, the righteous ones generate an abundance of merit, of goodness. Even when having conquered this earth filled with the living, the virtuous king sets out performing offerings in the Dhamma, in the Buddha said that there are times on this earth where there happens to 
B, uh, we call it a Dhamma Raja. It's a king of the Dhamma who rules the land, not in the way that every other king do, but in without violence, without stick or sword, with only virtue and generosity. And this is what reigns over the earth for a certain amount of time, f for the time that king is present. And there is no wars, there is no insurrections. And so the Buddha is, it, this comes very often in the, the suttas, the Buddha speaks quite uh, often about this virtuous Dhamma king. And here he mentions it in, re in relation to the merits that come from developing loving-kindness. The virtuous king sets out performing offerings, the horse offerings, men offering, food offering, money offering, unobstructedly. He does not part he does not partake in one sixteenth of a mind well developed in loving kindness, in boundless love, like the moon's radiance is to the stars. One who does not kill nor cause to be killed, who does not conquer nor causes to conquer, with a heart of love towards all living beings, that person holds hostility for none. And this is what the Blessed One said. Now on these beautiful words, I invite you to take a comfortable position, position you feel at ease and that is easy for you to bring up the feeling of well-being, of happiness inside. And usually, if you can, it's better to have an upright body. <laughs> if you feel like laying down, it's fine also. Uh, but you might uh, realize with time that um, having a, a fairly straight spine, not extremely straight, not too forcing, but having a straight spine helps us also open up. And you can close your eyes and just relax and smile. Let go of everything that happened today everything that's on your mind right now. Maybe something that's happened this week or whatever your plans are for next week. Just let it all go for now. and relax. Not paying particular attention to anything. Just enjoying this present moment. With a smile.
Now if there's any tension in your body, whether it's in your shoulders, in your back, around your spine, maybe your hands, just try to relax any tension in your body. You might notice that the awareness of your own body becomes a little clearer, a little more whole. Before there might have been more awareness on a certain tensed area of your body, and now that you're relaxing it, letting it go, the awareness of your whole body becomes clearer. And this perhaps feels good. Feels like relief. And allow yourself to enjoy that relief and smile. Now if the mind is very restless, if the mind runs to this or that, simply notice the tension that comes with these distractions. Tension in your mind or perhaps somewhere in your body. When the mind becomes distracted, tension arises. And simply note that tension and relax. Relax the tension.
let go. And smile. This is a happy meditation, smiling meditation. When the mind is joyful, when the mind is happy, it is uplifted and it is mindful, it is aware, it is present. is when we are happy and caring, compassionate and loving, that we are mindful. These states come together. Now, whenever you feel ready, you feel relaxed, bring up this feeling of love inside your heart. The feeling of love is a very tangible, physical feeling. For most people, it manifests as warmth, a kind of a tickling radiance emanating from the heart. The same feeling you have when you perhaps hold the baby animal or play with a child or care for a child. Perhaps it's a puppy or a kitten. That feeling that goes right to your heart. Maybe it's a place in nature where the life, the flora, the fauna of the place brings up in your heart a strong feeling of loving compassion.
And this feeling, as soon as it arises, usually doesn't feel like being contained. It spreads directly in the whole body. And allow it to, allow it to spread through your whole body. smiling and relax Relax and love. That's all. We always begin with ourselves. Filling our whole body. Suffusing, drenching it with love. Whenever the mind becomes distracted, doesn't matter. No need to make a big deal out of the distractions. Whatever it is, whether it's something you want to buy or something somewhere you want to go, or a person you've been thinking about. The reality is that the mind just goes off on its own. And when you notice this, you notice the slight tension that it brings. Just let it go relax and come back with a smile to the boundless love
these distractions are only mental habits and what we are doing now is learning to understand how the mind works how the mind moves on its own and how to nudge it towards very wholesome uplifted states and become very happy at peace perhaps now you feel that your whole body and mind is filled with love and now it wants to keep going outwards simply allow it Let your love ooze outwards in front of you to all living beings. with a completely open heart love everywhere behind you love to all living through all of space everywhere to your left love completely open suffusing all space
to your right. To all living through all of space. Love. Don't get lost in thinking or judging or analyzing the feeling. Just feel it and send it. Allow it to go out. everywhere above to all living beings through all of space everywhere below you to all living beings in all of space love And from now to all directions at the same time to all living beings in all directions through all space not trying to force it just relax. It, uh, it happens on its own. But simply allowing that wonderful feeling of love to beam throughout the universe in all directions.
just like the sun beaming its light throughout the universe in all directions completely open unobstructed measureless and don't forget to smile this is happy meditation If you notice tension in your body, just relax, let go, bring up another smile and come back to the love. If you notice the feeling of love is disappeared, just relax, relax, smile, whatever is on your mind at that point, just let it go. If you need to bring an object or a recollection A loving object like the puppy bring it up again if you need it and start over again it doesn't matter how many times the mind becomes distracted it doesn't matter how many times the feeling disappear what matters is that we recognize it 
we relax, let go of the distraction, relax the tension. This is letting go of unwholesome states of mind and to come back with a smile to the feeling of love. This is the second fold of wise practice, bringing up wholesome states, cultivating wholesome states. Relaxing and letting go of the unwholesome states that cause tension and bringing up and cultivating wholesome states that bring happiness and peace of mind and liberation of the mind here and now that is the Buddha's teaching that is wholesome mental development what he called bhavana cultivating wisdom through our own personal, direct experience. with a mind imbued with radiant love you might notice as you let go of distractions and tensions the awareness of loving kindness becomes more stable more established within
it also calms down and becomes very blissful not excited simply blissful the Buddha called this a happy abiding here and now Ditte wadamme suki wihari. Sabiti o vivajantu sabbaro go vinasatu mate bavatvantarayo sukidi gayu ko bawa bhavatu sabba mangalangra kantu sabbate vata sabba buddha dhamma sanganu bhavena sarasati bhavantu te May all misfortunes be avoided, may all diseases be averted, may all dangers be destroyed, and may you live happily for a very long time. May all blessings be upon you, and may all the devas protect you by the powers of all the Buddhas, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. May you be well and happy. Sad, sad. And as I've mentioned earlier, this is a vehicle, this is our foundation. And what we do here for half an hour, 45 minutes, is we learn to really make it strong, make it established, and to kindle it, and so that we can so that it can carry us in all of life events, all of situations. And so we can be wise and good and skillful in all of our actions. And that great goodness comes from what we do. And therefore a lot of happiness flowing to, in our lives, living a life that is close to the Dhamma. And so I invite you to bring this wonderful feeling that you've cultivated for the past little bit and bring it into your, your week, your life. And um, unless there is uh, any questions, that is the end of the session for tonight. Well, I was thinking Russell with Popa po, uh, sharing merits. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Russell, I, I can't see him. He's not here now, but maybe he'll come around when we start. <laughs> we can uh, we can share merits. We'll see.
<laughs> May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty powers, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's teaching. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Take good care of yourselves. And uh, maybe I'll see some of you on Sunday at the offering, or maybe not. But if, for whatever reason, have a wonderful week. And see you next week.